One thing he's known for, boldness in dealing with the devil, boldness in pushing the gospel forward. And we have the privilege to have Dr. Pasi Amarebu here this morning. He will take the next 30 minutes to help us reposition our spirits that we might be a little better than what we have been in the kingdom journey. Dr. Pasi, it's a pleasure to have you, sir. Please go ahead and bless the people of God. Thank you, Pastor Light. Thank you, brethren. I want to begin by appreciating the Lord for this opportunity. And then I want to thank Pastor Light also for yielding himself to the Holy Spirit to uh, be used for this program like this. And all of us that are here, and the Lord strengthen all of us to Finish well and finish strong in Jesus' name. Amen. Pressing on, they upward way, new high some gay, mean every day, still praying as I onward bound. Lord, lead me up. Lord, lead me up and let me by faith on earth. Lord, on my feet, on high, yeah. Amen. 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 I'm so glad that uh, Pastor Light, had, you know, uh, did that introduction. You see, because God, the Bible said that. Uh, we are fearfully and wonderfully made. Each of us is peculiar. Each of us is unique. Mm. Um, we thank God for the ministry of A. A. Allen. But I want to, you know, remind us that God does not want to create another Allen. Sure. Everybody is original. There's original thing. You know, we can just learn from what God used Ellen to do. You know, uh, biologically, physiologically, psychologically, spiritually, every one of us is unique. In fact, there's, you can never find the population of the world now is about 7.4 billion people on earth. Nobody, nobody, everybody's unique. That's the way God does. You can never see two evangelists who are the same, sure. two pastors who are the same. To uh, revival is what is Each of them is unique. So let's let's read. Let's begin this way. John fourteen verse twelve. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. And greater works than these he will do, because I go to my Father. This is John. John 14, verse 12. Very challenging scripture. Yes, sir. yes, sir. I mean, many of us have interpreted it, reinterpreted it, misinterpreted it, fought with it, quarreled with it. But the scripture is still looking at us. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, it looks so simple. Yeah. He who believes in Jesus. I mean, all of us believe now. The works that Jesus did, that person will do. And then Jesus now now cause the trouble. They say, and greater works. You know, Jesus, he, Jesus, Jesus will always cause power. trouble. Jesus mm. will always cause trouble. I mean, he doesn't want you to sit in your comfort zone. Mm. He doesn't want us to sit in our comfort zone. We we like sitting in our comfort zone. But Jesus, for us to accomplish the great things 
just like Allen accomplished his own and went home. Allen, Allen died at the age of 59. He was an American tele-evangelist. <clears throat> he finished and he went home. Now it's our turn. It's my turn. It's your turn hmm. to do our own part. So Jesus said, most, most assuredly, I say to you, to you as an individual, to you hmm. as a Christian family, to you hmm. as a church, hmm. he who believes in me, the works that I do he will do also. Hmm. What was what did Jesus do? Acts 10, 38. How God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good. Doing good. Doing good. And then healing all who were you know, oppressed by the devil. And God was with him. So Jesus was doing good, good works. Good works. We are created for good works. We are created for good works. Now, thank God for signs and wonders and miracles. Thank God for those kind of uh, divine intervention in the face of men. But there are good works. When you see a needy person. A need, needy person is not only somebody who needs to be healed spiritually or demons to be cast out. Let me give you an example. I was going to a church to preach on a Sunday morning. And as I arrived and I was going up the staircase, I saw that this young man who was selling, you know, some provisions down the staircase there. Now, the, the, the church was going on, but this young man was not involved in the church. He was trying to raise some money for the family. Now, I, I, I could easily have gone. I mean, this is a man of God coming to preach. I chatted him up in a few in a minute or two, and I asked him, how much the total weight of what you are selling? He told me the, uh, the total. And I made effort to pay him so that he can go and join the service. You know, and that was it. The people that came with me didn't even allow me to pay. They paid, and the young man joined the service. See, we have to, we have to be sensitive. What I'm saying, that, like Jesus, it wasn't only signs and wonders. He was a kind-hearted person. He was a compassionate person. In fact, that is the that is the foundation of this: the working signs and wonders. The level of your compassion determines the level of the signs and wonders you can do. Mm. Must have heart for people. Must be sensitive. He was doing good. When they say this guy is a good man, he's a good man. He's a good man. It's he it has he he feels he he understands the needs of human beings. God wants us to be like Jesus, who is who was sensitive, who cared, still cares. All right, so. Uh, those two scriptures are my foundational scriptures for sharing this morning. John 14, 12 and Acts 10, 38. Jesus. So, like I said, Ellen was an American Pentecostal evangelist known for faith healing and deliverance ministry. Those two things. It was known for faith healing and deliverance ministry. In fact, he's uh, both audio and video uh, Tips are still available. You can watch it on you know, YouTube. It was associated with the Voice of Healing movement that was founded by Gordon Lindsay. He also, I mean, attended some of our robots, you know, ministry in those days. So um, Ellen started as an, a, a Methodist. It was a Methodist. That was their family church before he you know, he joined Pentecostal, the Pentecostal movement. Well, let me quickly bring out some uh, relevant features of AALN. That AA is actually is called ASA, A-S-A, ASA, 
Alasan, A L O N S O, Asa Alasan Allen. Like I said, he was a, an American Pentecostal evangelist known for faith healing and deliverance. Deliverance. I mean, you can imagine in those days, he was born in 1911. They died in 1970. You can imagine in those days, I mean, till today, the issue of deliverance ministry, actually people, people easily believe in the healing ministry, but the issue of casting out of demon, exorcism, deliverance, Till today, people are still Christians still shy away from it. You hear some people say, ah, deliverance eh, is from believers. But I tell you, yeah, there are levels, you know, levels of demonic bondage. We'll talk about uh, oppression. The devil are, are attacking people from outside, like something like sickness and oppression, having evil dreams, you know. Then we'll have what we we'll call obsession. The devil wants to control people's mind, and it's, it's still happening today. I mean, it happened to no matter who you are. If you don't take time, the devil wants to take control of your mind. Look at Peter. Give a powerful revelation about Jesus in Matthew 16. You are the son of God. And Jesus said, flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but, this, but my father who is in heaven. Just a few verses after that, Peter was given a satanic verdict. Mind control. And Jesus said, get behind me, Satan. <laughs> the same Peter. So the devil makes a lot of suggestions on a daily basis. And sometimes you think you are the person making that suggestion. Can I hear you this morning declare with me? Say, I rebuke every every suggestion from the from the from the pit of hell. I rebuke, I rebuke every, every suggestion from the pit of hell in the name of Jesus. I cast down every suggestion every evil imagination. I cast down every evil imagination. I cast every suggestion of Jesus. Let the from the pit of hell. Let the Holy Spirit be the greatest influence over my mind. Let the Holy Spirit be the greatest let influence let the over your mind. Let the Holy Spirit be the greatest influence over my mind. Let the Holy Spirit be the greatest influence over my mind. In the name of Jesus. In the name Jesus. of Jesus. Amen. 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 Let me give you a practical example. On Saturday, I mean, right inside my bedroom, I mean, one of our leaders called me and said, Oh, sir, Saturday, I mean, it is ago. Sir, you know, I'm, you know, it's like I, I'm ready to die. I say what? I say what? He said because you know there is this thing that I mean he has achieved all he needs to achieve, very wealthy, has children, I mean travels abroad anytime, has properties here and there, businesses um, that are going run into millions and billions. I mean he's got everything materially, and I say what are you talking about? That suggestion is from Satan. The Bible says you will, you will see your children's children. Have you seen your children? Children? Have you seen your children today? Say no. So that's, that thing is from Satan. You see, the devil is subtle. The power of the enemy is not that the devil is so strong. It's subtlety, cunningness. Mm. That suggestion will just come. You think it's from you. That's a suggestion from the devil. And we have to be wise to be able to discern when the devil is bringing evil suggestion. You weigh it with the standard of the word of God. Is this the will of God for my life? So mm -hmm. it's so important. If you don't take time, you just accept it. And in medicine, that's what it called. Before anybody would die, it's called the will to die. Before anybody die, that person must agree to that. You must say, mm -hmm. okay, I'm tired. Uh, okay, it's okay. All right. Let me go. And then the person will go. And that's what the devil does. He wants to get your attention to be willing to do what is wrong. And it's so important. So this affects... When people say ah, deliverance is only for believers, I laugh. They don't understand that. They're already in a warfare. On a daily basis, though we walk in the flesh, we do no war after the flesh. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, they are mighty through God to the casting down of imagination. So you, immediately you become a believer, you're already in a warfare. Every day. But the, the, the good news is that Jesus has given us the victory already in Jesus' precious name. Amen. So the point I'm raising is that as far back as, you know, 50s, 60s, uh, Allen, Allen understood the ministry of deliverance and was involved in it, healing and deliverance ministry. Okay. Then 
Allen also loved music, you know, in his ministry. I mean, he used music, was a revivalist. The typical uh, camp meeting in Evangelist Allen we have in those days would involve preaching of the word, testimony, music, praying for the sick. In fact, at the height of his ministry, A. A. Allen could appear in one day, 58 radio stations and 43 television stations in one day. Wow. Are you are, are you hearing what I'm talking about? To tell you, you know, sometimes we sometimes we think we have done something. We are just scratching. We are just scratching. A man, a man appeared in one day, 58 radio stations and 43 television stations in one day. At the height of his ministry, Allen was accomplishing that. At the height of his ministry, Allen was pulling about 22,000 people in a in a campaign. 22,000. So that's why we, God is calling us to do greater works, greater works than he used this man to do. Now, let me just, uh, let's look at a few lessons we learned from Ellen's ministry. One of them is the issue of power in the world. Ellen believed in the world. The Bible tells us lessons from his ministry. I'm talking about now. One, in Romans 1 16, the Bible says, Paul said, I am not ashamed. I'm not ashamed of the gospel, the good news, the word of God. Why? It is the power of God unto salvation, first to the Jews and then to the Gentiles. The power of God is unlimited. Whether you're in Europe, whether you're in America, whether you're in Africa, whether you are in Asia, any part of the world, Australia, the word of God is powerful. The word of God is efficacious. Pharmacists talk, talk, pharmacists talk about drugs. When a, do, a drug achieves its purpose, it's, it's regarded as this drug is efficacious. So the word of God is efficacious. Any day, any time, it's powerful. It saves, it heals, it delivers. It provides. Is the, is the word of God is powerful. The word of God is effective. Somebody here this morning, there's a need in your life. They're not just a need. I mean, all of us have needs, but there's a need that is crying out, crying out. You are crying out. God is giving you the word that will settle that case in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Psalm 107, verse 20. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from all their troubles. He's sending his word this morning. Receive the word. Receive the sword of the spirit that will settle that matter. I declare that matter settled. I declare God is settling you right now. God is settling that matter in the name of Jesus Christ. By the power of the sword of the spirit, you are receiving solution in the name of Jesus Christ. Receive. Amen. They receive, receive the word for this season, the rema that will settle that matter. Understand that before that problem arose, God already has a solution in the name of Jesus. The word of God is powerful, is effective, is efficacious. It is it's, it's result-oriented. The word of God is coming to you now, right now. Receive it in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Ellen believed in the word. There's nothing as powerful as the word. Even in, in casting out of demons, right? I was watching the, one of his clips that this woman that had cancer, cancer, <laughs> cancer that is ravaging people today. And Ellen believed in the word. Ellen believed in the power of the name of Jesus to cast out demons, to heal the sick. Mm. I mean, he was praying for this woman in, in public. You know, this thing is not done. He wasn't doing this. There were thousands of people in the hall, and he was inviting the sick one by one and praying for them. He prayed for you. He will ask you to test whether you are experiencing your healing. This woman that had cancer after it took a few minutes, right? And he actually asked the husband because he had a tumor. The woman had a tumor near the neck. So they test, they tried, they said the tumor had disappeared. Doesn't cost God anything to do a miracle. So, but our faith must be strongly rooted in the word, strongly rooted, strongly rooted in the word, strongly rooted in the name of Jesus. 
I remember this case. Uh, COVID did not allow us to travel last year. <laughs> but my last trip to UK was in 2019. I remember I was preaching in a church through this program. We have finished the program. Okay, Saturday, Saturday before the Sunday service. Saturday evening, we have finished the Saturday service. And uh, I was coming down from the pulpit. And the wife of the pastor said, Sir, please, there is this woman that you must minister to. I said, okay, bring her. They brought her to the altar. She was in a wheelchair. The woman was in a wheelchair. And I am frank with you. I'm sincere. I mean, plain with you. I don't think it is my fate. I think is the that woman is the pastor of the the wife of the pastor is the I want to tell you is the fate of the pastor's wife that he that woman. I was just used as an instrument. She brought this woman that was in a wheelchair to the pulpit and said we should pray for her. I said okay. I mean that's why I'm here now. And I prayed for the woman and the woman said pastor can I get up? I said wonderful, wonderful. Can I get up? I said wonderful. Get up. They took away her walking stick, and this woman got up. <laughs> and she started walking. I want to tell you something, brothers and, and brethren. I, you know, that woman, I didn't, in fact, it didn't really mean much to me because, I mean, I didn't know what was. I mean, the, the church broke into two. They said the woman has not walked for two years. So we're not doing it in our name. We are doing it in the name of Jesus. Every one of us must realize that at the name of Jesus, every name must bow. You know, we must realize that we are praying in the name of Jesus, we are ministering in the name of Jesus, and anything, anything good can happen when we call upon that name. We must put our confidence in that name and trust it. Ellen practiced that. He believed in the power of the word. He believed in the name of Jesus. Lessons we are learning from his ministry. Now, the Bible tells us that faith is now. Somebody here this morning, there is something you need to believe God for. Now. Now. Faith is now. Faith is now. In the next 24 hours, you are going to have a divine encounter. Amen. Before this time tomorrow, somebody here, before one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of you, Seven of us, rather. Oh, eight. I'm one of them. Eight of us. Before this time tomorrow, before eight of us, I'm one of those eight. Before this time tomorrow, that's a major shift. That's a major miracle. That is. No, the door shall be open unto you on the premise of that. That's a major miracle that will take place in the next 24 hours. Amen. Receive it in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Faith Amen. is Thank now. You, Jesus. Now faith is, is correct. I receive it. I it's receive correct. It. It's not. It's not past tense. It's not future. Hope mm. is future. Faith is now. Mm. Faith is now. Something Thank glorious Jesus. is taking place. There's a major shift. Thank you. I receive taking place healing. In Lord. I receive life. healing. Of God. Right I receive now. healing. Something Lord. major is taking place in the name of Jesus Christ. Whether you believe it or not, something glorious is taking place in your life right now. Right now. I said right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Thank you, in the name of Jesus. You know, the, the Bible says, as your days, so shall your strength be. As your days. We that are living in Nigeria are living in a very harsh environment. Very tough. I have this vision. You know, the, the level of killing and massacre going on here. I'm so confident in the power of the resurrection that we are getting to a time when you will step into a place where so many Christians have been massacred, and as you step in, they will rise up. Amen. <laughs> Without prayer. Just a child of God steps into a situation like that, and all the dead people come alive. Amen. Amen. You know, like the kidnapping here, I've had some grace in praying. You know, when we talk about what we're talking about, faith is now. Alan believes that faith is now. He practices it. You know, we, uh, let me give one. One ex I mean, I can give several examples, but let me just give one. This happened in Oweri, in our Jewish church, in Oweri. 
a few years ago. They kidnapped the son of the traditional ruler of the town or the village where our church was located. You know what? They kidnapped him because the guy refused to be, he refused to practice idol worship. He got saved in our church and joined our church and they kidnapped him. Say, so you must practice idol worship. He said, no. And they kidnapped him. What happened? And the church was praying. The prayer was sent all over the place. And when I saw it, I, I, that kind of thing, I wait, and then I want to hear the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit stared up my heart. This thing happened around when, Tuesday or Wednesday. And I said, led by the Holy Spirit, I said, that young man will celebrate Christmas with us in the church. I mean, those of us that know, I'm in Southwest Nigeria. This thing happened in Southeast. God is not limited by distance at all. No, not limited. God is not limited. The word of God is not limited. Faith is now. You can stay in Africa and the God will use you to do a miracle in North America or uh, Latin America or Australia or Europe or any part of the world. Faith is now. It's current. Just like you have light that is current. Faith is now. It's current. Several of us prayed. Many people. I don't, I'm not, I mean, I'm not, I'm not discounting that. I'm not, you know, despising of the, the power of, I mean, synergy, the power of unity. All of us were praying. But it was laid in my heart and I said, this guy is going to celebrate Christmas with us. That's, that's madness. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Saturday, the guy, nobody has seen him. They are not appeared. Sunday morning, nobody has seen him. I'm calling them. So you can ask Pastor Leo Ibe what I'm talking about. He was the pastor of the church then. Sunday, Christmas afternoon, as they finished the service and about going, that guy stepped into the church. Faith is now. Leo had to call me and say, like you said, this guy has joined us in Christmas service. There's somebody here this morning, there is a declaration you need to make. There's somebody here this morning, there is, there is a violent declaration. In your eyes, it's impossible, but not with God. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. Before the end of this service, you need to make a violent declaration. Not only violent, write it down. Give date. Put date to it. And mm. God will honor it. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. You will yes. make that declaration, write it down, put a date. This is an encounter you're having this morning. Christianity is an encounter. There's an encounter. There's a transformation. There's a change coming over. There's a, there's a, there's a turning around in somebody's life this morning. Receive the grace to take that boast in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, we learn again from Helen the issue of increasing faith. Look at Jesus in Luke chapter 2, verse 15. Even Jesus. The Bible says, And Jesus increased in wisdom, in stature, in favor with God and with man. Increase. No stagnancy. Can I hear somebody say this morning? I refuse to be stagnant. I refuse to be stagnant. I refuse to be stagnant. I am going forward. I am going forward. I am breaking barriers. I'm breaking chains. I'm breaking chains. I refuse to be stagnant. I am moving forward. 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 I 
Thank you, Jesus. Amen. May I unmute Dr. Fassi? May I unmute yourself? May I unmute yourself? Hello, Dr. Fassi, please. Can you unmute yourself, please? Hallelujah. Amen. All right, is it is better now? Yes, yes, yes. Sure. Okay. Praise God. Now, Allen, Allen did, was not stagnant. He kept making progress. Like I said, I mean, at the height of his ministry, he was ministering in over 58 radio stations, 43 television stations in one day. You know, some of us preach two, three sermons in a day, and we are finding ourselves, and we are saying, I was telling uh, somebody was asking me, actually, why? What do you do on Sunday? I said, on Sunday, I preach at least in two or I preach about two or three services. And then I have several meetings. My my, my Sundays are I start from 7 a.m. service and I get to them around 9 p.m. Say what? I say, that's just. And you see, if you don't train yourself this way, you need to train yourself, deliberately train yourself, because God is going to expose you to greater things. I want you to get ready for greater things. You must have the mindset of great things. Attempt great things for God. God has not finished with you yet. The devil may be telling you you are finished. You are irrelevant. You can't do more than this. You will keep running around. That, that power of running around, running around and achieving nothing is broken in our lives. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. You see, Amen. God will train... The Bible says he trains our hands to war and our fingers to fight. Go and read the, the stories of revivals of several of those men. Some of them, were, they didn't even have cars. They were, they were using horses to go and preach. Like in places like London, UK, some of those preachers, they would preach here, the horse would take them to another place, they preach there, three services, five services, without microphone. And God was doing awesome things. So, mm. can you imagine when you, I was telling someone, I said, look, we have to train ourselves for them. Can you imagine when you are going to minister to 10,000 people? How many people will lay hands on? If you insist that the only way you do miracle is by laying hands, you begin to think big that when you speak the word, it will accomplish his purpose. Jesus cast out demons by his word. If God allows you to lay hands, you lay hands. I'm not saying lay hands is not good. If God allows you to use anointing or you use, mentally use, but the strongest agency of signs and wonders is the word of God. Jesus cast out demons by his word. You must begin to think, what of if you are, like I said, you are preaching a crusade where about 200, 500 people get saved. How many people are you going to lay hands on? We must enlarge, deliberately begin to enlarge our coast, enlarge our faith, begin to see visions of enlargement and increase in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So this morning, as I begin to round off, I want to challenge us going back to those two scriptures. Jesus said in John 14, 12, most assuredly I say to you, he who believes in me, he who believes in Jesus, the works that Jesus did, that person will do. Alan did his own and finished and left. It's my turn, it's your turn. How God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, intimacy with the Holy Spirit. You hear his voice and you do his will. During COVID-19, last year, 
we are in a lockdown. While we are locked down for two months, three months, God gave me inspiration to begin to write two books. Two books, very unusual books. I wrote those two books and I just published them two, two, two weeks ago. They came out. I mean, we walk by faith, not by sight. I don't know the project. I don't know the project God is laying in your heart. And you are saying, how am I going to finance it? That's part of the that's part of the miracle. Divine provision. I pray for divine provision. I pray that God will raise prophetic helping hands for you. I pray that God will visit you in a way, in a way that you have a kind of experience you've never had and take you to another level of ministry. I pray that God will connect you and network you with men and women that you used to use to bless your ministry in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray that your ministry will become more relevant in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I pray that as you minister, there will be results, instant answers to prayer. The kind of answer to prayer I've never seen before. I pray that the treasure that God has put in this certain vessel will come alive. In the precious name of Jesus. I pray that Amen. God will anoint you afresh. God will grant you a deeper understanding of his word and his will. In the name of Jesus Christ. I Amen. pray that your faith will not fail, that you grow stronger, you grow stronger in the name of Jesus Christ. I Amen. see you rise up, rise up, you are rising up, and your enemies are going down. You are rising up. Amen. Grace Amen. is being released upon you in a way you have never seen before. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I, I pray that I pray that the, 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 the investment of heaven in your life, there will be a harvest in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Bible says in Psalm 92, verse 12, say the righteous shall flourish like the palm tree. I declare that this remaining four months of the year will be far better than the last eight months in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. In September, September will be better than August. October will be better than September. November will be better than October. And December will be better than, than November. In the name of Jesus Christ. We see the help of God. Somebody there. You are feeling lonely, but I tell you, I tell you, you are feeling lonely, you are feeling abandoned, but I tell you, heaven is coming to your help. Heaven Amen. is not coming. Heaven has come. Receive Amen. that divine help in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Last Thursday, there's a program we do every week in church. I call it Faith Clinic. I've been doing that for years. Those of you that don't know, you know, last Thursday, when we, the rain was so terrible in Lagos. It was so terrible that... It affected attendance. Even myself, I came late because, I mean, the road was blocked. We finished the service, and then somebody chatted me up. Say, sir, this program, I, I didn't even know. He said, I've been watching it online. This program has been blessing me so tremendously. I said, wonderful. He said, sir, can I have the account number of the, of the faith clinic? I sent him the account number. In a matter of one or two minutes, that guy sent an offering, one offering, that is bigger than the offering we have been doing for five months. Are you hearing what I'm saying? One offering that is bigger than five months total offering of the people that attend the faith clinic. I don't know who you are there. You may be, in fact, I was feeling discouraged that day. God just encouraged me. I don't know who you are out there. God will do something that will grant, that will encourage your heart. So Amen. That you can stay in ministry, you will finish well. I cause every spirit of discouragement. I cause every spirit of despair and depression. I command them to lo lose their hold. In the Amen. name of Jesus Christ, let light Amen. come into your heart. Let faith Amen. arise in your heart to conquer. Amen. Conquer Amen. the giants. Amen. Conquer Amen. the enemies. Amen. No matter who the giants Amen. are, God is giving you victory over those powers, over those challenges, Amen. over those troubles. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I see you rise up like a giant killer. God is anointing you as a giant killer. Amen. Listen to me, brothers and sisters. A Christian can never be, dis be, be disadvantaged. I want you to mark that word. A Christian can never, no matter where you find yourself, God will favor you. God will Amen. help you. A Amen. Christian can never be this, this disadvantaged. You, because you are in Christ Amen. Jesus, you are already in a vantage position. It's working out for your good. It's going to turn around for your good. And the glory will be God's and the testimony will be ours. We give you glory, Father, for helping us this morning 
Thank you for Pastor Light and his team. Ask you to bless them. So, Lord, thank you for this congregation. Let your grace grow stronger in our life. Help us mm -hmm. to be tenacious, to hold on mm -hmm. until we see your glory. Because we're going to see it's from glory to glory. Mm -hmm. Oh, Lord, I want to see your glory. Amen. I want to offer my sacrifice of grace. Let us run off as we pray in the spirit right now. Release your heart. Brother, release your spirit. Sister, release your spirit. Release your spirit. Release your spirit. Jesus mighty name we Amen. We give you praise. We give you glory. Thank you for such a visitation. Thank you for such divine nuggets, insights. Thank you, Father. You made the heaven and the earth by your word. Oh. And thank you for the same word you've dropped from heaven through your servants this morning. We receive it, we believe it, we celebrate it, and we rejoice in the outcome of this impartation. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Wow. People of God, please join me to sincerely say thank you to Dr. Passy, and uh, we are so grateful, sir. This is what you have always been doing for many years now, and may the Lord keep strengthening you and keep blessing you in every area. Thank you, sir. All right.